So today we're going to be making micro jigs. And what I mean by that are jigs that are 1 32nd of an ounce or smaller. We're going to be making them all the way up to 1 80th of an ounce. I'm not only going to show you how to pour them, but I'm going to show you how to paint them and how to time as well. They're incredible because they can be fished with either a spinning rod or a fly rod. And they catch everything from bluegill and trout all the way on up. So stick around, you're not going to want to miss it. So this is my pouring area. Many of you have seen it before. I've got lots of videos on pouring lead. And as always, before I do anything, just want to remind you that you need to take precaution with lead because it is very toxic. And so, as you notice, I have a fan here. The door is open. I am blowing uh, any fumes that might accumulate outside. And, uh, you know, you want to wear proper personal protection like I wear and even gloves. Um, you know, I recommend you do that, although um, I tend not to not because I want to have a firmer grip on the mold. But just make sure that you stay safe, keep cords away from everything. And, um, you know, I've, I go over this a lot, but it really is important that you stay safe when you're pouring and working with lead. Okay? Um, you can follow my other videos where I, I deal a lot. We pour all different types of stuff. And so I'd encourage you to check those out as well um, to make sure you're you know, all the little tricks and nuances that we do um, when we pour. Now, I do have a jig mold um, that has a little barbed heads on it um, for holding on, you know, um, soft plastics and such. And that is a, uh, that jig goes from, or that mold rather, goes from 1 32nd of an ounce on up to half inch. Well, this one is actually a lot smaller. And I'll let you take a look at this in here. This one actually, um, the biggest it goes is quarter ounce over here, and then it goes to 1 16th, 1 64th, 1 80th of an ounce, 1 32nd, and 1 8th. And the model uh, of this jig right here is a model JNR-6-A. And most of the equipment I get, my hooks, my jigs, everything, I get from Rock Island Sports in Upper New York. They are a really good company. They're not sponsored. They don't sponsor my videos or anything, but I really like working with them. They go the extra mile, and uh, they take care of me. They got very good pricing, and they're very fast with shipment. Um, and all orders over $75 at this time of this video are free shipping. So um, it really is a, a great place to, to utilize, and I encourage you to do it. I'll put a link in to their site in the uh, description below. So the very first thing I want to do is make sure my lead is hot. I always keep my lead on 7, whether I'm heating it up or I'm pouring. That stays a good temperature for me. And uh, I, what I do is I use just a cheap dollar spoon and I scoop off any contaminants that are on here. That looks pretty clean right now. And what's great is this is a lead, lead pour pot that comes from the bottom. So it, it's going to be, all the impurities will flow to the top and it's going to be pulling almost pure lead from the bottom gives you a nice clean jig or whatever else you're pouring. So the very first thing you want to do is you'll notice right here there's a slot and that is to heat up your mold. So we're going to be pouring that and then dumping it, pouring that and dumping it. I'm going to heat that up about 10 times and each time I'm going to take that lead and pour it back into the pot to remelt it and it's going to get this mold nice and hot. You know this mold is hot when you can just barely touch it back here on this metal and it's good and hot. You want it hot because it'll flow better and it'll get in all the nooks and crannies. So let's start by doing that right now. So almost there. There we go. And it doesn't take long to solidify. Alright. So now I can open that up. And there you go. I'll just take a pair of pliers. And that lifts right out like that. Gently place it back in. So I'm going to go ahead and do this about 10 times. And then the mold will be ready. The next thing we're going to do is place the hooks inside. Okay, now that the mold is up to temperature, what we want to do is we want to place the hooks in here. And uh, if you're not sure what size hooks, it'll tell you right here on the mold. Okay? 
um, for instance, this quarter ounce takes a 1 0. Um, the 16 ounce is a number 4. The 1 64th is an 8, a uh, size 8. The 1 80th is a size 10. The 1 32nd is a size 6. And the 1 8th is a, is a size 1. Okay? So they, these, these take a Eagle Claw 570 or 575, which I believe is the gold hook. All right, so what we're going to do is place these in and then close up the mold and then we'll pour these. So let's go ahead and do that. I've laid all my hooks out so it's easier for me. Um, these here are the uh, size 10. So I'll place that right in here like this. You got to be careful because this mold is hot. You don't want to burn yourself. Okay, now that I've placed all the hooks in the mold, you want to make sure they're all lined up and there's nothing standing proud here. You want to make sure they're all in the grooves where they're supposed to be. Now I'll just take and close it up and you want to hear this clicking sound. And you can tell the mold is closed if you can look along here and look along there and you can see that it's tight and it is. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is we're going to pour this and I'll, I'll show you. I don't just pour one mold at a, at a time. I want to pour and pour and pour and pour. I want these all connected at the end and I'll show you why. So we start all the way in the back here and as you see I put one bead of lead all along the top there. And the reason for that is I want to be able to take everything out in one pour. You can see because that was nice and hot, you can see how nicely these heads are formed. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab it here and wiggle it. And now everything comes out in one piece. They'll be easier to take off than at the end also. So let's go ahead. I've got a lot more to do. And then I'll show you how to take the sprues off the end. Okay, so now that we've got several hundred jigs poured up here, uh, and this is what they look like when you're done with them. Again, I put a connection across all the top here, and that way they come out like this, so they're not individual. And so now what we need to do is remove the jigs from the main part of the lead. And uh, this part here is called the sprue. This cone part right here and so to remove them it's really simple you don't need pliers or anything else you just grab the hook like this and I'm wearing gloves simply because I've got a lot of these to do and um, you know the lead will come off on your hands so this helps protect your hands and I don't have to wash them afterwards so basically you just take the jig like this and you just wiggle it back and forth and you want to go across you don't want to go this way with it because the sprue I don't know if you can see that but the sprue is narrower there so we just go across a couple of times and it breaks off very cleanly, just like that, okay? So I just do each of these like this. Here's another one. Only takes a couple of seconds. And there we go. I'll just continue on. I've got a lot of these to do. And then we'll jump over and we'll get into painting. Also, as I break these off, it's easier to sort them now than rather later. So I just have a plain old box with dividers in it, and I put the smallest ones here, the 80, 180th of an ounce, 64th of an ounce, 30, 32nd of an ounce, and so forth. So now that I have the jigs removed from the, the main portion of the lead, you might be wondering what I do with this. Well, it's pretty simple. I just heat up the pot here again, drop them in, and let them melt down and then what I do is I take my ingot mold which is here this comes in one pound and half pound ingots and I'll fill this up uh, by taking and transferring the molten lead into here that way I have a nice way to store the lead for next time okay now we're set up to and ready to paint the jigs and uh, basically you just need a few things I have a heat gun here I like using a heat gun it, it regulates the heat um, I use a torch on the bigger, larger jigs that I do, stuff that's like, you know, uh, 8 ounces or so. So um, it heats it up faster. But for smaller jigs like this, a heat gun is perfect. Now, as far as the paint we use, I, I like to use the powder coat paint. 
And this is Protex right here. Comes in a lot of different colors. We're going to be using black, pink, and green pumpkin today. And if you'd like to do your jigs in white or black, um, you can go to Harbor Freight and you can buy this large can here at 16 ounces. Uh, this is about $8, where it's about the same price for these two ounce uh, specialty colors in the Protec. And it's pretty much the same stuff. So if you're doing white or black, I recommend you use this. Now as far as the fluid beds that we're going to be using right here, I got this from a different YouTuber. I can't take credit for this. Um, he came up with a great idea how to build these. Very cheap. It's just a two inch coupling, two inch piece of pipe, and a cap, test cap in the bottom with a piece of copy paper sandwiched in the middle there. These are aquarium valves for adjusting the airflow. Very cheap on Amazon. I'll put a link to the build for these and so I encourage you to go over and check out that YouTuber's channel and also um, where you can get these valves as well. So basically um, all I do is I have an aerator here, a little 110 bubbler and this is an AC. I have it plugged in um, and then I have it hooked up here. And now what I'm going to do is I've already put some paint in here and what you want to do is you want to adjust this valve till you see it, you can see it start bubbling just like that. That's perfect. What that does is it aerates that paint and allows it to fluff up so when you dip it in it's like dipping in a fluid. You can see it move around like a fluid here. Okay? And it surrounds that jig and really adheres well to it. So uh, the one thing you want to be careful of is especially with these smaller jigs that you do not cover the eye okay uh, you want to make sure that when you put the and I'm have a larger jig in my hand here but to show you but you want to put them in at an angle like this almost horizontal and bring it up to the eye but do not cover it because if you cover the eye that paint will bake that eye shut and it's very difficult to get off so uh, what I like to utilize is just a pair of needle nose pliers like this. I just hold on. I'm going to use this larger jig to show you so you get the idea. It's pretty simple. And again, you can go over to my channel. I've got lots of lure building videos, pouring, painting, all types of stuff, airbrushing. Uh, and I encourage you to check that out to get a, some more detail and different things. But basically, all we're going to do is we're going to heat this up. I'm going to dip it into paint and then I'm going to heat it up again just to make sure that it bonds well. And then I've got a little container of water here. I drop them in there. They cool instantly and they don't drip or anything. So let's go ahead and start this. I'm going to put the heat gun on high. And it doesn't take long to heat these up. Just a few seconds, especially with the smaller ones. You always want to heat from the back. You do not want to heat the eye area. You want to let that heat come around it. Okay? So now I'll just dip it in again horizontally up to the eye but not covering it. That's what it looks like. Okay. Now I'm going to heat it up and it's going to turn a nice gloss just like that. Nice and flow around that jig head. Now I just drop it in. Now as soon as I drop it in the water you'll notice a big color change okay it'll always be darker when it's in liquid form when you've dipped it but it'll lighten up okay or change its color to the, to the real color it's supposed to be so that's how we paint the jigs then what I'll do afterwards uh, as an optional thing you can bake them in a toaster oven which I have over here my son gave me and I use that specifically just for baking lures okay you don't want to mix you know use the one in your kitchen for that Make sure you have a designated toaster oven to do that. But I usually just hang them from the rails and I bake them at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. They become extremely hard then. So that way when they're bouncing off rocks and stuff, they don't chip. So now that you've got the painting process down, let's jump to the tying table and make up some of these beauties. Okay, so now we get to the end of our project where we get to actually tie up some of these jigs. Now you can use these jigs like this. Um, they're great for ice fishing. They're very small. Um, this is a 1 80th of an ounce jig. It's got a size 10 hook on it. In fact, to give, show you the size comparison, here is a dime. So it's about 3 quarters of the uh, diameter of the dime. 
And like I said, you could use these for ice fishing you can put it, or just fishing for trout, panfish, whatever. All you need to do is slip on like a wax worm or a mealy worm and uh, cast it out. You could also put on soft plastics like very small twister tails or bobby garland. An inch and a quarter bobby garland would work good on that. Um, and that would really uh, um, be effective for you as well. So, but we're going to be tying some up and I wanted to do this, some tying for you to show you all that, how many different variations you can do with this. Um, I've just put a pink one in here for now. I really like pink. Um, there is a, a long story that goes back. I'll share it with you a little bit while I tie this. But pink is a very, very effective um, color for um, fish. And so um, basically what we're going to be doing to tie, you will need a couple of things if you're new to fly tying. You'll need a vise like this. It's about $20. This is a Supreme vise. It's rotary so I can turn it around like this. As you can see, I can get to different sides if I need to. It's about $20. So it's pretty inexpensive. And then you're going to need some thread. Now this happens to be uni thread. All right. Uh, it's in size 6.0. Uh, 6.0 is fairly small, so, and we want some smaller thread because we're going to be using four smaller jigs here. And then this is a bobbin that it's holding the thread. Uh, it's about seven or eight dollars. You can get these four. And what it does is it just keeps the thread all nice and, and compact and plays it out as I put it around the hook. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to just take the thread and lay it over the top of the hook shank about halfway back and then we're just going to wrap it back like this okay and right about to the point of the hook okay and then what we're going to do is cut off that tag and that excess we don't need that so let's get rid of that now I have here some marabou okay this is very lively you can see it and so it actually has like a pulsating um, action in the water and it works really well. So what I want to do is I want to strip off some hackle on this. Now the best way to do this, I'm not going to do it because I want you to see the action that happens afterwards. But the best way to tie this is to actually wet it. Just put it in your mouth or in some water and just wet it down. And it will. It, it can be kind of unruly sometimes to, to work with. But if you wet it, it will uh, stay in place really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to cut off a section right here. All right. And then you can see it there. I'm just going to keep pulling it down until it's about where I want it. Okay. Great. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to this back end and just give it a wrap around the hook. Okay just like that right and so you can if you need to adjust it you can pull on this bring it forward a little bit or you can let it out farther however you want to do that I'll bring it forward a little more there we go about this about this the shank size of the hook works well okay and again like I said the wetting this really helps you don't want it can get a little unruly so let me just cut this off and Okay, now I can wrap this up. And we'll just wrap it down. And just as many wraps as it takes to just get all that flattened back down and hidden. Okay, just like that. So now you got that pulsating tail right there. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some um, sparkle braid and silver like this. And I'm just going to tie that on. Pull that down best I can. And I'll go back down to the bend of the hook. And then I'll go back up all the way to the head. And now it's just a matter of taking this and wrapping it around like that. And 
And I want to build up that body a little bit as I go. One more, there we go. And now I'll take that and wrap it around the thread and tie it off. Make sure it's good and tight. That. Then we will cut this off. Grab it some more. Now the reason I'm using the pink thread is because I'm finishing off next to the head and it will blend right in. So if I use black, you'll have a line there. It's not going to matter one way or the other. But now what I'll do is I'll whip finish and I use my fingers to do that. Um, I have a whip finishing tool, but I don't use it that much. So just give it about five or six wraps on there like that. Stick my bodkin in here, hold it tight, all the way up. Right like that. And there you go. Really easy, simple pattern. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, this, you have this action here. Uh, you can see it. Uh, you know, you got the silver body, mimicking fish. You got the, the pink head, all of it. You, you know, you can tie a whole different bunch of variations with this. Um, you can do all black using a chenille body like this. Um, this chenille, this would wrap on like that, give you an idea. Um, you could actually use a hackle um, like this one and wrap that over like that to add more detail like legs and stuff but this is effective just like it is just that that body wrap and that marabou and you can use many different colors the story behind the pink is I had a friend I was teaching him how to fly fish and uh, we they had stocked the stream one day and uh, I had gone there and being it was stock fish I was actually using bait to attract the fish and catch them and I worked very hard to catch what was in this pool and um, I think I caught two trout and uh, he showed up a couple hours later and said uh, you know he was going to try and I said well good luck you know because they haven't been biting and next day at work I talked to him I said how'd you do he said I limited out I said really I said on what he says pink salmon eggs and ever since then I've been using pink um, in a lot of different colors and jigs and salmon eggs and uh, it has been phenomenal um, so don't sell pink short it, it doesn't look natural in the water except for you know egg patterns but it's very effective on fish so I hope that gives you some ideas again you can tie this in a lot of different things you can um, use this sparkle flash here, if you wanted an all pink body, you could do a white tail, pink head, black head. Uh, it, it's endless. It's really up to you. And the fly tying is really easy. You saw how quickly I did that. Um, it's not a complicated fly at all. And uh, you can fish these, again, either with a spinning rod or with a uh, fly rod. And uh, I think they'll really find a place in your fly box because they're that effective. So there you have it. I hope that video was helpful to you. I hope you got a lot out of it. And I hope you might consider using some micro jigs on your next fishing trip. I really like the jigs. I fish jigs a lot, whether they're big or small, because the weight is incorporated into the jig. And so therefore, I have control about what's going on down in the water column. I can feel it. I can, you know, manipulate it. And, uh, you know, if the weight is above and separated from the jig, uh, you really don't know what's going on with it. I mean, you have an idea when the fish tugs, but up until then, it can be in free fall, it can be, you know, swing to the side or whatever. But with the jig and the weight built into it, uh, it really helps me anyway. And you know, control is something that all of us really seek in fishing. But not just fishing, in life as well, don't we? I mean, we want to be in control of our own, own destinies. We want to be in control of our own self. We want freedom to choose however we want to live. And so I think that when it comes to God, a lot of us have this wrong idea about Him. I think that we think that God is here only to spoil our fun, only to 
um, squash our creativity and uh, help us to feel insecure about who we are. But you know, that's not the case at all. In fact, it's the exact opposite. God made each one of us, you and me, different. He made each one of us special. In fact, it says in the in the book of Acts, in the Bible, in chapter 17, that he established the time that we would be born, the place we would be born, the boundary of our land. He, he actually set a specific place in all of history for you and I to be born at an exact time in order that we might live the perfect life. You know, God says that he knit you and I together in our mother's womb, that we are completely um, known by him in every way because he created us. So don't you think he would know what's best for us? Well, he does. The fact of it is though, that we don't know what's best for us. I mean, we often follow after our heart and what, whatever our desires might be, but oftentimes those desires are evil. Those desires are things that lead us into tragedy and circumstances that are painful because they're not of God. And you know, so often we tell God to stay out of our life. We tell God that we wanna do what we wanna do. And you know what? God lets us, he gives us that freedom. But you know, when we crash and burn so often, you know, when we, we follow the desires of our heart that are not after the things we got and, and we wind up in circumstances that are painful, you know, like broken marriages and uh, all the other things that go along with, with sin, then God is still there for us. He welcomes us back. He wants to reunite us, even in spite of our sin. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to the cross, so that Jesus could die in our place. You know, it says the penalty for sin, the wages for sin is death. And that's a spiritual death and a physical death, separated from God forever. But Jesus was willing to come down from heaven, to go on the cross, to pay our penalty, to suffer, to die, to take on that penalty of death, that you and I might have life, that you and I might have a restored relationship with God, that we might understand who He is, we might follow after His way. And so, you know, it's as simple as just putting our faith and trust in Jesus and what he did on the cross. You know, if you're not sure how to do that, well, I've written a free book. It's very short, it's about 16 pages, and it's in the description below. It's called Growing Deep. And I've written it so that you might know the joy that I have in knowing Jesus Christ. You know, God loves you so, so very much, and he wants to restore you back into a right relationship with him. He wants to bring about healing in your life, spiritual, physical, and emotional. He's there for you. He wants you to know that he cares for you. And so the book shares with you a little bit about my life, how I came to know Christ and how I put my faith in him and why. But more importantly, it takes you through the scriptures and shows you how you can have your sins forgiven, how you can have that right relationship with God and be restored back to him and how you can walk with him on a daily basis. So again, I encourage you to check out the book. It's a short read, only about 16 pages. But you know, it shares with you about God's love. And please, please don't ever forget that God loves you more than you could ever know. So guys, thanks again for joining us today. We really appreciate all you do for, to grow our channel and for being part of our YouTube family. And so until the next time, remember, get outdoors and God bless.